Let's continue with the second uh, sermon. And uh, we want to see which are the priorities of our life when we really meet with Jesus. And I want to read from Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen we what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. After you really encounter Jesus and your life is transformed, basically you are being born again. And it's not enough to be born. Any child who is born has to eat, has to walk, has to breath, has to grow. If you give him toys instead of food, he will die. That's why a lot of teenagers are being baptized. And after one month, two months, three months, they said, Pastor, I, I don't really have a feeling to go to the church anymore. And they will spend a lot of time watching all, of, all, all, all sorts of things. But basically, even if he continues to grow up physically, he will no longer grow up spiritually. And your soul is like your body. If you don't give him what he needs, he will starve. In the end, he will die. That's why there are few things in Christian life which need your attention. And you have to focus on those, otherwise you will die spiritually. And every day you have a very big challenge. You will have to choose daily between priorities and urgencies. Maybe you heard a lot of guys said, saying, I don't have enough time for this. Uh, you have time. Listen to me. You have time for what you choose to have time for. Choose the important over urgent. And let me give you two examples. Getting your car engine, engine repaired is urgent. Changing the oil so it doesn't need to be repaired is important. Getting help when you are sick is urgent. Taking care of yourself so you don't get sick is important. If you do important, you won't have as many things that are urgent. And I understand Martha on the other side. Basically, she felt the pressure of being the host of Jesus and, he, and the disciples. There was no mobile phone, no email on that time. Suddenly, he saw, she saw Jesus and all the disciples in front of her house. And she had to prepare some food for the guests, wash the dishes, prepare the table, and so on. Everything was urgent. Mary knew that it's much more important to listen to Jesus' words rather than to prepare the meals. <laughs> Mary chose important over urgent. The Bible says Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Listen today, the best leaders don't do more. They do more of what matters most. We live in a busy world and we have a lot of distractions. And I challenge you tonight, just to look at your notifications coming on your phone every minute. Notifications from WhatsApp, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. And it's pretty strange, but when you want to read the Bible, you cannot because of the distractions. Hear me tonight, you don't have to reply to every comment from Facebook. You don't have to check every like. You don't have to read every new posting on social media. It might appear urgent, but it's not important. Okay, Pastor Christy, but what's important? Four important things you need to focus on if you want to grow up spiritually. First, prayer. 
and maybe you said you said today uh, if I if I knew that you will talk about prayer I, I wouldn't come <laughs> this is such a basic thing uh, hear me loudly we don't have issues with complex things we have issues with basic things Daniel 6 verse chapter 6 verse 10 now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days is there anybody who is more busy than Daniel Daniel had a lot of reasons to ignore praying. He had a lot of meetings daily. He had a lot of problems to solve. He had a lot of responsibilities. But Daniel chose important over urgent. He knew that praying is important. Ravenhill, and please read his books. His books are amazing. Ravenhill said, no man is greater than his prayer's life. Basically, prayer does not condition God. Prayer conditions us. Prayer does not win God to our view. It reveals God's view to us. When you pray, in most of the cases, you are not changing God's will. You are changing your will to match the God's will. There was a serious accident uh, in the town where I live, maybe more than 10 years ago. And uh, the boy was thrown out of the car through the windshield. He was seriously injured in the neck and the blood was flowing abundantly. On his last moments here on earth, he looked to his dad. Basically, his dad uh, has given him a new car, a brand new car when he was 18. In Romania, you have to be 18 to drive the car. In his last moments, he said, Daddy, say a prayer for me. And his father said, I don't know how to pray. I know to build houses. I know to buy expensive cars. I know to make gifts. Do you know why this guy in front of his deathbed hasn't asked about insurance? Hasn't asked about the police? Why he said that Say a prayer with me. In my humble opinion, I think that when we are leaving this earth, the, the other life is opening in front of our eyes. And I, please speak to, uh, to some nurses who take care about the old people who are dying. In most of the cases, you will hear a lot of testimonies saying that uh, they were, uh, they were uh, scared, they, were, they had all, all sorts of emotions, they weren't sure where they will go. And this guy said, I need a prayer. He knew on that last moment that you cannot live the entire eternity with God if you hadn't prayed, you haven't talked with him before. For him it was, it was too late, for you it's not. Choose prayer tonight over anything else, but don't wait. Don't wait for car, car accidents to learn how to pray. The Scottish reformer John Knox was often in such an agony for the people in his country that he couldn't sleep. He passionately prayed, Oh Lord, give me Scotland or I die. Knox was such a man of prayer that bloody Queen Mary said that she feared his prayers more than all the armies of Europe. Is anybody fearing your prayers? <laughs> Second thing, what's important in our spiritual life is Bible reading. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Yeah, of course, Joshua was a true man of God. 
He was a great leader. His family served God. Do you know his secret? The book of the law. The book of the law. I met a lot of teenagers who said, uh, God, isn't, uh, God is not speaking with me while they have their Bibles closed. One day on, on, on my Facebook uh, chat, I saw a message. Pastor Chris, please give me the phone number or of one prophet because I want to call that prophet to see what God thinks about me. I heard a voice who said, just ask him about his Bible reading plan. And I asked him, what about your Bible? When was the last time you opened your Bible? And he said, I don't care about the Bible. I'm just caring about what the prophets are saying. The best prophet I know is the Bible. <laughs> is the Bible. I have a good friend in California. His mother was four years ago when I visited him last time, his mother was 73 years old. And I asked him, What's, uh, what is your mother doing every day? He no longer works. How is she spending her spare time? And she said, she, he said, she loves the Bible a lot. And I mean, what, I, I asked him, I ask him what, what's meaning a lot? What does it mean a lot? And he said, my mother read the Bible, the entire Bible, 137 times. I changed the subject immediately. I was ashamed as a pastor to hear about such awesome testimonies. Guys, Jesus fought with the devil using the scripture. Uh, what about you? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And hear me tonight. Devil will do everything he can to depart you from the scripture. He will give you all sorts of urgencies in order to keep you away from the word of God. He will give you notifications from Netflix that a new movie was just released. Bible reading it's your, is your daily meal for your soul. Don't you let your soul starving to death. Feed it. I was, uh, I was visiting a widow sister from our church together with our senior pastor, Cornell. And basically because I'm working as a uh, software developer, I'm just used to have a, tab a tablet, uh, a phone, a laptop near me all the time. I'm checking a lot of mails every day and all this stuff. And when I uh, entered her room, I saw nothing about this, nothing of this. And I ask her uh, if she doesn't get bored because she was a widow for more than 15 years since she lost her life partner. And she replied, not a word. I have a TV in my room with 66 special channels. I've seen all, this, all of them this year and now I'm watching them the second time. I am on the Ezekiel channel right now. She was talking, obviously, about her Bible. Okay, let's go farther. This is hard. Okay. It's fasting. Mark chapter 9, 28. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Guys, you cannot fight with demons using your skills, your money, your physical body. Demons are running away only when somebody is getting closer to God through fasting and prayer. That's why from time to time you need to take one day, maybe two days, I was at a university uh, for three years and starting from the first year until the end of the third year, I had a special day on, on Tuesday 
where I, when I was fasting for my future life, for my future spouse, for my future wife. It was pretty hard. Every Tuesday, I was closing uh, my day of fasting by going to a specific church. Maybe we were four or five young guys and 20 elders. And I was looking like, I'm not sure if this really matters, but I will still continue to do that. You see, it's so easy to, to read about Joseph's, Joseph's story because you know the end. It's so easy to read about Daniel's, Daniel's story because you know the end. But they didn't know the end when God was preparing them for what will follow. That's why we need faith. That's why you need to take a special time and if you care about your future partner, to ask God to guide you. Because you cannot randomly select your future wife on Instagram. It's not like a giveaway. Of course. And usually God is, is giving you something similar, similar with what you are. If you are praying a lot, if you have faith in God, if you are honest, of course that you want such a partner. You don't want a partner on Sunday morning when you want to go to church. He says, I'm, I'm just sleeping. I don't care about church. That's why if you have high principles, you will choose somebody with such principles. If you are whatever, just to be married. <laughs> okay, try it. <laughs> After three years, God worked in my life. Basically, I just, I'm just uh, telling you how. It was very, very interesting. Uh, basically, when I was on my last year on high school, I saw uh, Krina, my future wife. I, of course, I didn't know then that she will be my future wife. And uh, on the first year at the college, at the university, I asked her... Uh, do you, uh, do you want to talk with me about, about marriage and all this thing? And she said, I have a boyfriend. And I said, what? Is there any boyfriend greater than me, looking better than me? <laughs> and I, basically I was devastated. After we married, she told me, my, my friend, basically in English it's hard to explain, but in Romanian it's like, am un am prieten. You don't say, I have a boyfriend, I'm on Britain by heart. But she said, my boyfriend was Jesus. And I, what? Why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> and she said, because I wanted to finish my studies. Wow, great. <laughs> and after three years of fasting, basically I, I deleted all the mails with her. I, I just wanted to forget her. And I said, God, I will not try anymore because I will fail. When I'm trying myself, I, I really fail. And I just uh, stopped for looking uh, for future partner and just spent time praying and fasting. After three years, my wife's, <laughs> my wife's uh, computer was infected with a virus. Uh, on that time, there was Yahoo Messenger. Is anybody here who knows what a Yahoo Messenger is? Wow. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, basically, it was that tool where everybody was on invisible, but it, they were online. Yeah, <laughs> everybody was invisible. And basically, I, I received a lot of pop-ups with the virus. I, I said, okay, I forgot to, to delete this girl. I just deleted her emails, but she was still there. Okay, I said, I will go to her house and uh, just clean up the computer because it really bothers me. And basically, I was infected with a new virus. The love one. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> yeah. So basically when God is working uh, in your life, uh, basically it's, it's so interesting and you don't have to do so much effort to look up for your, to look, uh, to find your partner. You just have to put a lot of effort to get closer to God because he knows the best what's appropriate for you, what's the best partner for you. There is no perfect partner. 
right? But God knows for your mission, for your plan, this is uh, your wife or your husband. Fasting humiliates our tendency to rely on the natural world and forces us to live from the spiritual. As a result, God's voice becomes, becomes clearer. Fasting is a great way to gain clarity for an important decisions. Refraining from eating or drinking for a period of time is an act of worship. That is good for your soul. In fact, fasting is less about what we are giving up and much more about what we are making room for. When we fast, we exchange what we need to survive for what we need to live. And that's more of God. Now, a lot of teenagers are, were asking me, uh, Christy, what is the schedule? When we should start our day of fasting? 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 8.30. And I told them, uh, the, last, the least important thing is the fact that you don't eat when you fast. This is the least important thing. <laughs> there are much more important things, and you will discover them in Isaiah 58, I will, I will not read them right now. But basically Isaiah tells us, make someone's day better when you are making your day worse. Just make someone's day better. Maybe you have prisoners on your heart. Yeah? You do not eat that day, you do not go shopping for yourself, you don't take care of your needs, but then give your food to the poor, buy some clothes for somebody in need, and so on. And let me end with, there are more, but let me end it with the fellowship. And uh, I want you to understand, guys, that soccer players spend time with soccer players. Chess players are doing training with other chess players. If soccer players are spending time with the ones who hate soccer, they will fail miserably. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And uh, I would like you guys to spend more time with the guys who love God and less time with the others. Maybe tonight you will filter out your some person from your phone, from your Instagram. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, spend more time with the guys who like to pray, who read their Bible, who show respect to their parents, who serve Jesus whenever they have some free time by visiting poor, helping orphans, and so on. And so on. In the end, do not forget to prioritize important over urgent and focus on prayer, fasting, Bible reading, and fellowship. And let me close with uh, this. There was a time when Martha chose what was really important. Can you please uh, show John chapter 11, verse 20? There was a tragedy happening in her family, and you know maybe this passage, but I want you to to hear what, how I read it, because it's very important. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Maybe Mary was like, okay, I think it's your turn today. I had a day when I encountered Jesus personally. We live in the same house. You are such different than me. Jesus is coming. Our brother died. Just get out of here and meet him. Then said Martha to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. But I know. Do you see, the problem Martha had wasn't about his knowledge. It was about his uh, works, her acts. But I know. I know the sermons. I know the the pastor, I know, is not enough to know. I know that even now, whatever you will ask for, of God, God will give it to you. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. 
And please pay attention. Jesus said to her, Martha, I am the resurrection. You don't know me. This tragedy happened because I wanted you to really know who is the resurrection, who is the truth, who is the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And please check this verse, 26. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And this is a personal, personal question for Martha. Believe you this? And please check her answer. And this was the time when she really met Jesus. She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe. Is there a difference between I know and I believe? It's a huge difference. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. He really, she really met Jesus through a tragedy. And let me ask you, when do you want to meet, to meet Jesus? When there is a car accident? I was traveling through an airport and one guy stopped me and he said, Christy, I'm, I'm listening to your sermons on YouTube. You don't know me. I have a, f a brother who's in coma. It's coma, right? It's in, he's in hospital. He had a sense of relation, a, a great relation with Jesus Christ. I'm not sure if he will live or die, but I wanted to tell you that when my brother had the accident, this was the first time when I really, I was really thinking about my life, seriously. And I told him, I told him why you have waited so many years for a tragedy to happen. When do you really want to meet Jesus? When you are healthy or when you are sick? Do, do you see the difference? A lot of the guys from the hospital says, Lord, Lord, help me. Where are you, Lord? And the Lord is saying, where you left me when you was healthy? There where I am. It's so awesome to meet Jesus when you are healthy, healthy, to walk with him day by day. And when you will be in the hospital, he will be there with you. Of course. Uh, do you want to meet him when all your family is fine or when you, one of your family members are dying? Do you want to meet him when there is peace in your country or when it's war? Do not wait for the tragedy to choose important over urgent. And I will leave a testimony in the end. About 150 years ago, there was a great revival in Wales. As a result of this, many missionaries came to Northeast India to spread the gospel. There was a region known as Assam, which was comprised of hundreds of tribes who were primitive and aggressive headhunters. Into these hostile and aggressive communities came a group of missionaries from the American Baptist missions, spreading the message of love, peace, and hope in Jesus Christ. Of course, they weren't welcome. But one missionary succeeded in converting a man, his wife, and two children. This man's fate proved contagious, and many villagers began to accept Christianity. Angry, the village chief summoned all the villagers. He then called the family who had first converted to renounce their fate in public or face execution. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the man said, and maybe you can prepare this song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Enraged at the refusal of the man, the chief ordered his archers to arrow down the two children. As both boys lay twitching on the floor, the chief asked, Will you deny your faith? You have lost both your children. You will lose your wife too. But the man replied with the second verse of this song. Though none, though no one joins me, still I will follow. The chief was beside himself with fury and ordered his wife to be arrowed down. In a moment she joined her two children in death. 
Now he asked for the last time, I will give you one more opportunity to deny your faith and live. In the face of that, the man said the final memorable lines, the cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back. He was shot dead like the rest of his family, but with their deaths, a miracle took place. The chief who had ordered the killings was moved by the fate of the man. He wondered, why should this man, his wife and two children die for a man who lived in a faraway land on another continent some 2,000 years ago? There must be some remarkable power behind the family's fate, and I want to test that fate also. In a spontaneous confession of fate, he declared, I do belong to Jesus Christ. When the crowd heard this from the mouth of the day chief, the whole village accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. The man, this man chose important over urgent. Being alive, being alive was urgent. Following Jesus was important. I have decided to follow Jesus. Have you? I have decided tonight to pray more. I have decided to fast more and I have decided to read Bible more. Amen. I will let Brother Nalo to close this. And after that we will pray. But do not forget, choosing your faith is important. And after you are choosing your faith to follow Christ, it's extremely important to choose important things over urgent. And may God bless you, everybody. Thanks.